Shape Labs VR is a fairly new in beta VR creation program that I've been looking at. Um, I've just done one hour in it and I've recorded that process here. Obviously, we're only doing it for about 10 or 15 minutes, but I'll give you a quick overview of what I think about it and my initial feelings and um, why it's a little bit different than Adobe Medium and Gravity Sketch and the other VR creation tools I use. So let's dive right in and take a look. So I jumped into Steam um, and did a quick search for Shape Lab VR. So I've been aware of this program for quite some time now and I've never actually leapt in to have a look at, at what it does. So it was 15.49 on the um, uh, store and it's a beta. So quickly installed it and then fired it up. Um, literally no problems as you would expect. And then dived into um, an Oculus Rift S. Now, I've been sculpting uh, digitally for, uh, let me think, over 20 years, and I've been sculpting in VR for five years now, um, starting with um, Adobe Media, and it was Oculus Medium. And I obviously use programs like Gravity Sketch, uh, which are nerves based so splines and, and, and points, which are contr called control vertices with surfaces and subdivision modeling. Now, this is different. And the reason that this kind of now intrigues me is because this is this is what we call dynamic tessellation. And this is what you can see if you look at something like uh, ZBrush, where it was first introduced to me. And they bought a piece of software called Sculptress, which basically, as you adjust the mesh by pulling it or sculpting on it or smoothing it or adding clay, as we'd say, then it, it, it dynamically adds triangles underneath and, and and that's quite common now so you see that in blender and 3d coat i think has got it and and and, and it's very common in normal screen-based digital sculpting but it's not that common in vr now so we have uh, adobe medium and masterpiece vr which give us voxel based and if you want to know a bit more about that look at my uh, video linked above now and that'll explain how voxels work uh, but this um, th this isn't that, and also the as I say with things like Gravity Sketch, um, you're, you're getting nerves based and subdivision modeling, but n none of this kind of, of 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 mesh based sculpting. So this is somewhere in the middle, really. So this is not subdivision modeling, and it's obviously not nerves or anything like that. But it gives you the ability to sculpt and get. Um, a better definition than you would with voxels to, to, to some degree. If you work really hard with your voxels you and you've got really high res, you can get some nice surface detail. But what I found with this, and this is my first hour, so this, this is what you're seeing is speeded up, but it's my first hour opening the program, understanding about left and right handedness, and then diving straight in. So it's not a complex program at all. It's very, very simple to learn. Um, you, you obviously have a set of tools on one hand and a set of, you know, and, and a pointer on another hand. And as you can see, what, what I've done there is what I would do in any program, which is start with a primitive. I've pulled out the, 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 the muzzle. It's going to be a, like a minor tool. And now I'm adding. So there's a, there's a basic set of uh, adding clay moving that clay, uh, inflating it, flattening it, all of the things that you would expect in a voxel-based program or in a, in a, in a mesh-based sculpting program like ZBrush or, or, or Blender now. Um, it's got this kind of thing, which is, which is a, you know, it's got HDRI backgrounds, so you can get some kind of a PBR, which is physically-based rendering effect going on. And you can see there I've changed the background and I've changed the material. Um, and it's updating on, on, on the fly there. So, it, you know, I haven't fully tested that yet, but there are an incredible amount of, or already out of the box, I can see there's an incredible amount of, of, of material settings in there that you can mess around with. So, again, this is my first hour. So, I'm, I, you know, I'm discovering things as I press buttons. Uh, and I'm just trying to think, right, what do I need to, to you know, to, to affect this part of the surface or what do I need? Um, and an example would be, you can see that there's a symmetry grid on there and I didn't find the ability to turn that off until well later in, in, into the process. But if if all you need is an hour to, 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 to find virtually every button that you need, then that's a, that's a sign of a good UI to me. Now, again, I'm not... I'm not um, 
the best person to talk to you about UIs because I like some odd UIs. So I'm a huge fan of ZBrush and I know a lot of people aren't um, in terms of the, the, the interface. Um, I find it very configurable in ZBrush and, it, and, and I've used it since the 90s. So I, I, I've grown with it and I'm comfortable with it now. Uh, you know, I, I like an interface that just works for me. So with this, I just found everything I wanted within a, you know, a couple of seconds of searching. So there, there wasn't a tool that I, I was I was looking for that I didn't find. Um, so 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 one thing that that I would say it's in beta. So I couldn't see anything that gives me multiple objects yet. Um, I think that's going to be essential. And then multiple objects objects with multiple materials w w will certainly be something that, that that I would be looking for. Um, and I would probably want more in in the way of. Um, the, the sculpting tools might need a bit more refining b because um, you can't get, or I haven't been able to get in, the, in this first session, you know, quite the surface integrity that I want. So I'd probably want to play around more with the. the, the I noticed there was some kind of um, a, a way to do alphas for the surface. So I think that that would be. That's more about me than about this software. So I, th I think there's. There's a, a a bit of soak time needed while while I you know while I find out what this you know what it can and can't do, um, but at the moment you know for, for for one hour in I I'm very very hopeful about about this software. If you were a fan of Sculptress, um, that that Pixelogic bought and then and then uh, you know absorbed into uh, ZBrush, then you're going to love this. This is essentially Sculptress in. VR. That's the way I would describe it to you. And if you if you like Sculptress as a separate package, it was a free package for such a long time. I think it probably still is. And then if you're working inside ZBrush and you like Sculptress Pro, which is the button that we switch on to get dynamic tessellation, then this is the program for you because that's essentially exactly what we've got. If you pull out a horn, you'll get you know triangles coming behind you and then if you inflate that it'll triangulate even more so that that is a it is essentially what we're playing with here and, and, and you, you know you've got that feature in in blender now you've got it in programs like um the ones that i'm teaching a lot like nomad and i think forger on the ipad might have it as well as well i, I, I can't actually remember that but the fact that it's giving you those um uh triangles and they're being decimated, sorry, not decimated, they're being um, added as you need them when you call a function. So like, for example, if you're if you're working on that surface and you do a score mark like I'm doing there, you would expect that underneath that is giving you uh, more triangles. So um, w w what I want to explore over the next few weeks is, is where this is um, better than a, a voxel-based solution, and where it's worse. So there, so there might be elements where this this doesn't, you know, it doesn't um, do what I can do in Adobe Medium, or or, or Masterpiece. Um, but where there is a benefit, you know, what what you know, should I be taking no, and should I be thinking about this as as something that I'd want to teach and support in, in the future? You can see all of those materials there. Um, uh, and, and that gives you an idea of you, you know a, a great way to just change the look while you're sculpting, which is, which is something I love doing. So I, I found that um, sculpting with some of these uh, materials on w was quite liberating. It looks you know it, it, it really does look strong when you view it with these materials on. So it, you know it's something that I don't do very often in in ZBrush or on, even on the iPad with Nomad or, or, or any of those kind of programs. I normally just sculpt with a with a basic clay or a matte cap of clay. Um, so it you know it, it's really nice to to put it in a nice environment to sculpt in, and and then find the material um, that works well as a you know if you want to sculpt in marble, if you want to sculpt in some kind of stone, then you know then this is a, this is a, a great thing to try. So let's take a look at that um, that process of of um, dynamic tessellation. So I've put there's, there was a wireframe button, which obviously if you want to look at uh, uh, at um, decimation or triangulation, then this is the way to do it. So what you see in there is the the wireframe overlaid. So I just did a little bit, a bit of a pull there just to prove that it was mesh based rather than than any kind of voxel. So you can you literally you're dragging little chunks of geometry around. Um, and it's just moving it, and it's essentially moving the vertices. 
um, which you would expect in any any polygonal based or mesh based uh, program. But as you can see, there's different densities of um, uh, tessellation there. So you, you've got large triangles and you've got small triangles. And if I call some of the functions, so you've got say smooth, or you might want to try something like um, here I'm going to do something like smooth again uh, and smooth there rather than smoothing it down it's basically adding triangles in a way that's predictable and, and gives you a, a smooth surface. I would have expected it actually to, to, to maybe um, uh, decrease the amount of, of triangles there but it didn't. Um, and, and all of the brushes that I was trying, wherever there was a change needed or more details needed, so like I said earlier if I needed a score mark or I needed to put anything like wrinkles or things under the eye, then it, then it would give me those triangles wherever I needed it. So you can see there I'm just smoothing down the end of that ear and it's giving me a, a much smoother surface by, by triangulating it and, um, at, and doing that on the fly. Now I use the move tool there and then as I smooth down, it then smooths that join between them. So it works exactly the same as, as, as any dynamic tessellation program does on a, on a screen-based um, or in a screen-based environment. Um, and you can then do something about that. You, you can basically uh, do like, like a remesh and that will average out everything that, 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 that you've been working on. And again, very very straightforward settings. You can see there, as I pull it, it's doing some damage to the to the um, the polygons. They're going way too beyond where they can they can cope and, and render correctly. And then you go back in and you smooth it, and then that allows you to 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 perhaps inflate it and then smooth it and then do what I've just done there. And you end up with with you know it, it's a way to build volume, reshape it. And then and then smooth it back down with with, with the dynamic tessellation, um, and and you wouldn't work like this. I'm only working like this to show you how that dynamic tessellation is 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 similar to other um, programs that work in the, in this way. There's plenty of of, of settings there. I, I, I'm using uh, on on the clay brushes. You can use the I mentioned it earlier on, like an alpha, and that gives you surface detail. So. It has got one advantage that you you know you don't have that in voxels. You can't affect the surface with with a, a black and white image, and that is really powerful. And that's something that I'm going to explore more because that's the one thing that I feel is missing in a voxel based environment is is the ability to to affect the surface in that way. So you know I'm I'm subtly putting you know not at the level where I was putting skin detail on there, but. I'm at least putting something that's that's beyond the initial muscle shapes, um, and it, and it, it you know I, f I was finding at this point that I was really really enjoying the experience, so you know I ended up making I didn't even know what I was going to make when we started we ended up with a minotaur's head so um, this is something that I, you know I'd wanted to you know I, I've wanted to explore this program for quite a while. I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please give it a thumbs up. It does help us get in front of other artists that might like our content. Please consider subscribing to the channel and help us build to that big 10K that we're after. We're just about to hit 8K now. And if you do like what we're doing, hit the notification bell as well so we can let you know when we're dropping new content, which is usually a Wednesday and a Friday. Have a great week.